Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Northwestern. It says right here, the best way to win the, the Big Ten Championship game is you dust off your PS3 or Xbox 360. I have an Xbox 360. And then boot it up, get a copy of NCAA 2014, and head into Dynasty mode because they're basically out of it. There's no way they can really win it. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again with another video. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be updated on all things college football, EA college football, pro football, Madden, anything like that, subscribe to this channel. You will not be disappointed. It won't cost you anything. All it's going to cost you is being updated on all those things. Hit the like button and the subscribe button, please. Share it too. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, here we are on Thanksgiving Day. I'm releasing this a little bit early. I will probably be sleeping in at this point and then waking up and having some turkey and some football. But before that happens, I want you to get into what's going to happen this week in college football. There's a couple of games coming up here. This is the week before conference championship week. I already said before, watch on Sunday and watch on Monday of this next coming week. You're going to see a lot of movement for head coaches. That was what happened last year. Lincoln Riley, Brian Kelly, those things will happen. However, we're going to talk about this week in college football because we need to talk about the weekend and how it plays into conference championship week coming up. Let's get into some of those games right now in those scenarios because some of them are already decided and some of them have big games this weekend. Let's talk about those. So here we are with week 14. We're on week 13 right now. Okay, you're going to see week 13 this weekend. However, week 14 is when we have the conference championships. We see a couple of these games here. Conference championship with uh, Conference USA, December 1st on Thursday, UTSA versus TBD. And then we have Pac-12 championship game. This is incorrect. They've had this incorrect for a while. Okay, USC is in, the, in, the, in the, the game. It's just over. Okay, USC does play Notre Dame. It is going to be a tough game. That's a national title eliminator. Or no, I won't say an eliminator because both of those teams don't have a chance there. However, USC could get knocked out of the national title race if they lose to uh, Notre Dame. Coming down here, we see TCU is already in the Big 12 championship game for December 3rd. And then we have another team to be determined there. We'll go over that. We see the MAC championship is set at Toledo and Ohio. The Sun Belt championship has also not decided. We're waiting until the, the ninth hour here to get this decided. The SEC championship game is set between Georgia and LSU. And then we have the American Athletic Championship game between TBD and TBD. We'll get into that. We also have my Boise State Broncos in the Mount West championship game replaying and re-hosting Fresno State this time with your boy Jake Hayner. It's going to be a different game. Then we have uh, Clemson versus Drake May in the Subway ACC Championship game. North Carolina lost last week, more than likely eliminating their chances at uh, even a potential to, to sniff a national championship run or something like that. So there's that. And then we have the Big Ten Championship game between TBD and TBD. First of all, let's get in those games that are already decided right now. All right, the first one here is between the Toledo Rockets and the Ohio Bobcats. So in the MAC, these two teams have not played each other. Ohio in the East, uh, Toledo in the West, or the other way. I don't really know. Okay, but anyways... Very surprising here. Ohio Bobcats at 9-3. and three. Okay, you don't see that. Opportunity for a 10-win team before bowl game. Season 4, the Ohio Bobcats. And then we have Toledo down here. We see a couple of these guys here. So it looks like we got 25 touchdowns and 21 touchdowns. It looks like we might have a little bit of an air fest right now between these two quarterbacks. 500 on the ground for the, uh, Toledo's top rusher and then 884 for Ohio's top rusher. Like I said, looks like we might have some passing yards here. 413 to 437, 233 to 295. Okay, we might see some... I might have to watch this game a little bit here. Your boy K.O. Rourke, it looks like he chucks the ball down the field. So that's what's going on right here. There is no line for this game right now. The uh, ESPN FBI gives the predictor to Toledo. We'll see, though. All right, and then we go over to the Mountain West Championship game. My boys, the Boise State Broncos. If you would have told me, after we start off 2-2 two and two with a road loss at UTEP, we would be hosting the Mountain West Championship game, I would have slapped you across the face. This is absolutely ridiculous, but this is where you're at. You fire your, your offensive coordinator, your quarterback transfers, and then the, the freshman redshirt, six foot six freak, Zoe Taylor Green gets in the game and does really, really well. However, Fresno State was a little bit of a disappointment just because Jake Hayner rolls his ankle against USC. He loses a couple games there. They lose to UConn. A couple games you didn't really see happen. However, they've since rolled off a couple wins in a row. They look good. Jake Hayner, this game, the last time these two teams played. Boise State, again, Taylor Green was his second start. So he was a little uh, iffy there. Had a couple times they didn't punch it in the red zone. However, Jake Hayner wasn't playing. So Taylor Green with some time. Jake Hayner with some recovered ability. Both going to be playing on the blue a, next week. Going to be an interesting game here. The line is negative four right now. I'm telling you, it's going to be a close game. Then we have Clemson versus North Carolina. And unfortunately for North Carolina, that loss to Georgia Tech, absolutely brutal. 
Hurts hurts the season. You come down here and check that out. The fact they lost 21 to 17 to Georgia Tech at home. However, unfortunately, your boy Drake May, his back must be hurting because he has been carrying this team. How, I mean, look at this. He's the leading passer, leading rusher, not the leading receiver. You can't really do that. It'd be hard. But Clemson looks like they've definitely addressed some things here. Now, remember, Clemson does have to get through South Carolina, who just has a huge win over Tennessee this last week. So Tennessee, or for Clemson has to get through South Carolina. Uh, not going to be easy. They are favored in this game by 7.5. And, and again, it is going to be the Subway ACC Championship game. Clemson versus North Carolina. Clemson still has a shot at a national title CFP entry. But uh, they got to get through South Carolina and North Carolina. they got to get through the Carolinas first. And then we have the game that everybody's going to be talking about, but I actually am not going to be talking about this game. The reason why is because if you look at this, LSU has been playing well as of late. Now, that does include a three-point victory over the vaunted Arkansas Razorbacks there when they had their third or fourth string quarterback. They, had, they, had, they were far down the depth chart at quarterback there uh, when they played Arkansas. But LSU, three wins by less than uh, double digits. Georgia has won. It was week like five at Missouri, something like that. They won by four points. Ever since then, even last week, then when they were struggling against Kentucky, they still won by 10 points, 16-6 to six versus Kentucky, and Will Levis, a very, very good quarterback. I think this is a Georgia game to, to lose. Um, I mean, obviously, you see down here the, the line is 15, 81%, according to uh, College Football Matchup Predictor of ESPN. So not really going to put a lot of stock into this one. I bet that Georgia is going to win. However, if LSU wins, the CFP, is, it's going to get real interesting. It's going to get real heated. So coming over here to the rest of these divisions. So what does that leave us? With? It leaves us with, with first the AAC. So we have Cincinnati, Tulane, and UCF. Houston is eliminated from contention because of all the losses they have between these two teams. They have just bad losses to have. However, Cincinnati and Tulane play each other. So that is a big game there. And then UCF plays South Florida. So what happens here is that Tulane, they win, they're in. Cincinnati, they win, they're in. However, Cincinnati lost to UCF. So if UCF wins and Cincinnati loses, then they are going to be out of that game. However, if Cincinnati loses and UCF loses, UCF is out, and then it will be Cincinnati versus Tulane, and potentially a rematch there. So we've got an interesting situation here. UCF needs to take business against South Carolina, South Florida, excuse me, and then Cincinnati and Tulane, whoever wins that has a good shot there. If UCF loses to South Florida, it's for nothing, and both of these teams are in the conference championship game. We come over here to the Big 12 Conference, so TCU is going to play Iowa State at home. More than likely going to have a chance at, you know, doing well in that game. Again, Iowa State is the last place team over here in the conference. Kansas State has an interesting game. So Kansas State did lose to Texas earlier on this year. However, that means that if Kansas State loses and Texas wins, Texas is in the, in the conference championship game. Hopefully we can see something better than that 17-10 to 10 game against TCU and Texas there. Kansas does play Kansas at home, so that's going to be interesting there. So we'll see what happens there. I'm betting Kansas State's going to take care of business. And then we're going to see that rematch. TCU, Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game in Jerry World. Purple all over the place. I'm telling you, that's what I think is going to happen. We come over to the Big 10. And the Big 10 is pretty simple in the East. Michigan versus Ohio State are playing for the championship game. Whoever wins is in. Whoever isn't is sitting actually really good for the CFP. Especially if there's a couple losses there. USC loses. If we see Clemson loses, they are sitting very, very good. But... With that, too, we come over to the West, and the West is an absolute mess. So much so that there are articles written about what's going to happen in this conference and all the tiebreakers. Let's get into those right now. So here we are with hawkswire.usatoday.com, and it tells you what each team needs to do to get into the conference championship game. So we come over here to the Western teams, Iowa. So it says right really quickly here, all you got to do is win, and you're in. you got to beat Nebraska, who is 3-9, and nine, and then you are going to the conference championship game. However, if you lose, it gets a little more interesting. Because for Purdue, as an example, Purdue is not out of this race. All they got to do is beat 4-7 and seven Indiana, their heated rival. They need to win, and they need Iowa to lose. And that's it. And think about this. So Iowa's only win against a ranked team is South Dakota State, ranked at the FCS level. Now, granted, really, really good. They won, what was that? I think it was 7-3 to three with two safeties in the field goal versus one field goal. Interesting game there. That's interesting if you really look at that. The fact that Iowa State is the worst team in the Big 12, and Iowa has a chance to be the best team in the Big Ten West, and Iowa State beat Iowa. Really interesting there. However, come down here to Illinois. Illinois has a shot. So what Illinois needs here is they need Iowa to lose to Nebraska, Purdue has to lose to Indiana, and they need to beat Northwestern. Northwestern's 1-10. They probably have the easiest road there. However, because of a couple key losses here, we thought it was going to be Illinois in the conference championship game, going to be that ranked team. They are not in it, unfortunately, so they are needing a lot of help here. 
And then it also comes down here and says Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Northwestern. It says right here, the best way to win the, the Big Ten Championship game is you dust off your PS3 or Xbox 360. I have an Xbox 360. And then boot it up, get a copy of NCAA 2014, and head into Dynasty mode because they're basically out of it. There's no way they can really win it. You come back here and see this. You see it's a little surprising because you see, you know, 4-4, four 4-4, and 2-6, four, four and 1-7 four, two and, well, two and, and, and seven are not surprising. But 4-4 four and four and 4-4 four and four for Minnesota and Wisconsin. However, a bunch of key losses there. They are not going to be in the conference championship game. We come over here and check this out. So here's how it goes. So UTSA has already locked it up. They're in the conference championship game. It is done. However, North Texas in the DFW region, what they have to do, if they win, because they have the tiebreaker against Western Kentucky, if they win, they, ha they have to beat Rice, and they will play UTSA in San Antonio. So for North Texas, DFW's road to San Antonio is through Houston. It is a game at home between Rice there. But if not, if they lose and Western Kentucky wins, then Western Kentucky is going to the conference championship game. So UTSA hosts potentially against Northwest or North Texas, possibly against Western Kentucky. So this was a bit goofy and they haven't adjusted yet. USC's in the conference championship game. It's over. Okay, they've got their nine wins. Nobody can catch them. They are in. It's done. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So Utah is unfortunately probably out of the conference championship game. And then I, uh, Oregon, they have the direct, they have the easiest path. They have to beat Oregon State. It's going to be a tough game. The line is pretty low on that one. Washington plays Washington State. So you got the Apple Cup. you got the Civil War up there in uh, the Northwest between Oregon and Oregon State. So more than likely here, I'm, we're seeing probably Oregon's going to win. Oregon's got a lot of firepower. Bo Nix is, is a little banged up. And Oregon State, they're a no-nonsense team. They come straight at you. They beat Boise State week one. They are a tough team. I'm telling you right now. I think that Oregon, I'm betting that they get it done. I would not be surprised if Washington makes it there by beating Washington State in the Apple Cup. And last but not least, the Sun Belt Conference. So it gets real, real interesting over in the East because Coastal Carolina, 6-1. James Madison, 5-2. They play for the conference championship game. Coastal Carolina will visit James Madison. James Madison, called up from the FCS, has their opportunity to go to their first Sun Belt Conference championship game. It's going to get real interesting here. So Sun Belt, Coastal Carolina versus James Madison. And then we come over here and check things out for Troy. So Troy is 6-1. South Alabama is 6-1. If Troy wins, Troy will go to the conference championship game. If South Alabama loses, Troy goes to the conference championship game. If South Alabama wins and Troy loses, then they will go that way. So we have Troy is going to play, I believe it's Arkansas State. Let me confirm that really quickly here. I believe Troy is going to play at Arkansas State. So that's a little bit interesting here. And then South Alabama has to play at FAU in Miami. Excuse me, not FAU. That was way wrong. They have to play Old Dominion at home. That wasn't even. That wasn't even close. I'm sorry. It's, it's conference championship game. We're late in the season here. I'm a little. I'm a little worn out. But that's how the situation goes here. So Troy has to win at Arkansas State, and they go. Otherwise, South Alabama has to win against Old Dominion at home. Old Dominion's a little bit lower of a team, three and eight right now. We see Arkansas State's also three and eight. So more than likely, Troy is going to go. But you don't know, man. You don't know. So that's how it's looking for conference championship week. So those are your eliminators right there. That's the, see, that's the situation. I'm really interested to see what happens with James Madison and with Coastal Carolina. That's a direct game right there. There's a couple other games there, too. Again, you see Cincinnati and Tulane. UCF sitting in the wings there, hoping for some good things to happen. So lots of things there that are going on. But what games are you most excited about? What shifts do you see? What conference championship games are you already looking forward to? Get in the comments right now and let me know. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that stuff. I appreciate it. That's it for me, guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I am out.